initially. All right, so Sasha, thank you very much for setting aside some time to talk to me. You know, not, not many of us get a chance to talk to somebody living in Ukraine, uh, long-term Ukrainian, uh, and, and a kingdom of God person uh, who's gone through this last five, six weeks. Uh, and what I want to find out today uh, is, is a little bit of how, what, what were you doing before the invasion? What were you thinking about it, you know, when the troops built up and so on? Uh, then how did things change? And, you know, I just want to get a personal view. How, how did this whole unexpected turn of tragic, tragic events uh, impact you and how have you seen it impact your country? So that, that's kind of the purpose today. I know the people who watch this are, are people who are really interested because they want to see what's happening uh, to God's people. And, and you're, you're a great representative because you're not only a leader there in the Ukraine, but you're, you convene YWAM in Eastern Europe. Uh, and, and for those of you who don't know, if you, uh, in YWAM, we, we don't have positions and titles and all, but we have functions in leadership. And one of the functions is to draw together the people in a part of the world. And that, that's what Sasha does for Eastern Europe. C could you give me an idea, of, by the way, about how many locations are, are in Eastern Europe uh, at the moment? Yeah, I think we have about uh, uh, 25 at least. Okay. Uh, yes, and I'm talking about Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, Armenia, and Georgia. So altogether, we have about 250 full-time staff. All right, and I, I suppose all of them have been impacted by the war on Ukraine. Yeah. Yes, definitely, to some degree, more or less, but everyone is does affect it by that yeah. for sure mm -hmm. yeah and on, on west of that too i know a number of bases that are further west are receiving refugees and yes we're we're all clear clear over in england out on our little mm -hmm. island we are deeply impacted by this and you know uh busier with ukraine than anything else for, at, at the moment at least for some of us um but like, give me a give me a feel for what, what you were doing before you know you're on a you're on a ywam training base uh mm -hmm. What's it like? You know, what, what what has been developed there? What were you doing before you had a visit from your neighbors? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, you know, it's really rare that uh, <clears throat> in my case, because I am a Ukrainian and I joined YVAM in my city, Ternopil, which is Western Ukraine. And I'm from Ternopil. That's my hometown. And so okay. I tried to escape once, uh, <laughs> yet yeah. to work with Al and Caroline in Slavic Ministries, that was a wonderful experience. But two months later, after we moved to the States, we, we, we really start seeing some of the things developed back in Chernobyl and we pray and we came back. Okay. So I never try again. So that's my <laughs> home. Yes, right. and we committed here and we work here. And, you know, uh, as I mentioned, we have 250 people on staff in uh, Eastern Europe, but about 100 of staff are in Ukraine. And okay. I, yeah, probably <clears throat> YVM Ukraine is the most developed YVM work, work in the Eastern Europe. We have a wonderful UFN campus uh, in YVM Kiev that was started by Kelly and Vicky Hudikov. And now it's uh, Anya and Kyle Schlegel. Uh, leading and they right. took that base and a really amazing level bringing lots of schools that uh, impact Russian speaking world. Uh, every base have uh, buildings and facilities so we kind of roots down deeply uh, in Ukraine and can operate pretty well. So yeah. everything was going pretty well till the 24th of February. Right, right. Yeah, so uh, the tension, you know, See, this is the thing, you know, people think that war started 24th of February, but in reality, it started in 2014, right, when Russia right. took away uh, Crimea and started the war uh, in Donbass uh, region. Right. So from that time, all of this tension was real to us. And so, and all of the developments that happened in the last year before the invasion, we kind of let us to understand that it's getting serious and serious. Right. Uh, so we was, it's hard to describe, but we was surprised, but didn't yeah. when the invasion happened. 
We didn't knew that it's going to be to that degree that actually happened, uh, but we knew that we should expect. And uh, if you look in the history of Ukraine, it's not eight years of war with Russia. Actually, it's a 300 years of struggle yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. that we experience. And we stand that we have a uh, Ukraine as a nation, Ukraine as a culture, Ukraine as a land, and we have a right to define our future and what we want to be and who we want to be. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's what it's happening. Now, one of the things that, that marks out Ukraine, in, in my understanding, is that in, in Russia and with the Russian Orthodox Church, uh, who are very much uh, hand in glove with the government, uh, yeah. they have suppressed religious freedom very successfully. And yes. they have expelled foreign workers. They have shut down free churches and practices. I think I, think I heard that I think I read somewhere that, that Russia was uh, seventh from the bottom of the nations for, for religious freedom. So oh. they're, they're worse than a whole, whole lot of, of Muslim nations and, and Hindu nations and so on. So yeah. that, that's an extraordinary thing. But Ukraine's not like that. Describe the difference, please. See, the, the thing is, uh, <clears throat> we don't have this one uh, denomination or confession that it's really dominating Ukraine. Uh, we have a Russian Orthodox, we have a Ukrainian Orthodox Church, ah. and we have a, about 5.5 million Greek Catholic. Uh, and the, it's, that church was persecuted after the Second World War too, and it was underground just like evangelicals. Yeah, did, you say, a, did you say Greek Catholics? Yes. Okay. It's a right. Yeah, it's a union church. I think it was 1592. The part of the uh, Orthodox Church uh, made it this, that was in the Western Ukraine made the decision. It actually was political decision, but they made the decision to come under the authority of the Pope and accept uh -huh. Catholicism. But they asked if they can continue uh, the liturgy in Orthodox way and not to have a celibacy for the priests. So it was granted. Right, right, okay. Yeah. So uh, you, if you look at the landscape of uh, religion or denomination, Christianity in Ukraine, so it's a well uh, level of uh, Ukrainian Greek Catholic, Ukrainian uh, Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, and the evangelicals. Uh, evangelicals have a really big influence in, in Ukraine. And so that's kind of brought that good balance and since uh, 1991, when the uh, law of the freedom of religion and speech was passed in the uh, Ukraine, dependent Ukraine, since that time, even one comma was not changed in that law. Right. Because that's such a strong relationship between the uh, leaders of different denominations really lobby to make sure that Ukraine will uh, remain in the freedom of religion. And matter of fact, I believe it's the, the most free uh, country in the whole entire world at the moment. Well, and there's, I've understood that, that uh, some of the largest uh, free churches, uh, evangelical, charismatic churches yeah. in all of Europe are, are in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and often they are under the leadership of uh, Africans or, or uh, leaders from other parts of the world. Is, it, is, that, <laughs> is that right or not? It, it, it did change. Yeah. For the last 10 years, I have to say, we had some ups and downs and with all of this, <laughs> yes, and some challenges, but the uh, majority, it's a Ukrainian leadership that we have. Okay. But I all just right. want to mention one more fact. Please. Um, from 70 to 80% of the pastors of the evangelical churches that was start for the last 30 years in Russia are Ukrainians. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, so Ukraine, they're, they're, they're evangelistic and, and missionary, mission minded. Yeah, definitely. So Ukraine had the biggest and largest impact uh, in Russia worldwide. Right, right. So for me, when the 2014 war started in the bus, I have to say I did cry because yeah. I understood yeah. that we will become very limited as the Ukrainians uh, take gospel to Russia to the end of right. the earth. Right. Yes. Yeah, so. Right. Uh, yeah, so Ukraine is, a, in the Russian-speaking world, it's probably the most influential 
the evangelical church period. Yeah, without doubt, I I fully agree. Just from a little the little I that I know, I mm -hmm. there's there's another question that that, that comes to, to mind, and 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 that is, uh, did did the mission to Russia actually slow down or stop then, or or did it somehow continue without causing too much trouble? It did slow down. It did. It slowed down. Okay. Yeah, it slowed down. You know, for us, Vivemers, it's a little different story, even though we, we had some tension in the relationship in the beginning, 2014 15. Uh, but denominationally wise, it was a, uh, had a big impact. No. And it wasn't, yeah, it was, uh, yeah. Okay. No, we, we, we need to say that there, there, there are YWAM people in Russia too. So, how, how's that going with, 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 with the two nations at war? How, how are you still in touch with the Russian YWAMers? Is, are you able to be? We some yes. Yeah, I suppose they're they're impacted by the information they get. The, the news they get is very very uh, propaganda laced. Um, yes. And that so that probably strains the relationships, huh? Yes, in many ways, in many ways. Okay. And the the, the thing is, uh, I just want to be careful to say anything because we in the middle in the middle of everything, and there is a impact uh, deeply, special for Ukrainians that in one day you can experience the whole spectrum of human emotions. And yeah. so yeah. I, I just want to guard my heart and not to go on anything. But I, I, I think uh, we'll have a very long and painful process of recovering right. uh, from the impact that right. we experience. Because from our point of view, uh, anything that we give to Russia, it was good. It was our heart or it was yeah. our servant heart. And uh, what we got back, it's, a, it's, a, it's yeah. Right. Well, let, let me just say this for everybody watching. Uh, I think we have to accept the fact that we are immersed in uh, a waterfall of information or a great deluge of information, but we we all have uh, skewed information, and and, and often it's it, it is distorted by nationalism. It's distorted by the uh, agenda of of those who are the most influential in our nations, and and that means. Um, government that means press um, that means uh, educate educators and, and so on who who influence us and as much as we would like to think that we are objective um, here in Britain we are immersed in a particular view of the world uh, and there, there's free speech so there's a conflicting opinions mm -hmm. but still not not very different <laughs> the, yeah. you know we we're not getting much of how just this war is um, as people in Russia feel but we need to be very compassionate and understanding with those who who are immersed day in and day out with a steady diet of how important this war is to to free the ukraine from nazism and you know and, and things that sound absolute rubbish to us but if that's all you're getting you can you can be swayed pretty easily by that so well sasha that's a really important thing for us to pray for you and and for yes, all the yes. ukrainian and all the russians too that that mm -hmm. the that, that the um that the overwhelming bias of the information coming to them will not create divisions within the body of Christ, but that yes. they will be healed when you could talk again openly, which yeah. you can't do now. Yeah, it's painful. Well, yeah. Let me go back to February 24th. Um, mm -hmm. When you realized that bombardment had begun and troops had begun to move in, did you think it would be a long lasting? campaign or did you think what, what were you thinking mm -hmm. well the the invasion starts five in the morning and i was woken up by my friend from romania florin <laughs> he called me six in the morning and he said did you hear the news so i open up and i realized that uh this has happened the worst scenario that he was prayed that it's not going to happen it did happen so from day that moment, the Monday of 24th of February, I mean, I don't think it was Monday. I don't remember even what day. But for me, it was Monday. And Monday never finished till today. Yeah. yeah. And so, and uh, again, you know, people uh, responding differently uh, in this kind of crisis. And so my response was, okay, we need to do something and we need to do now. 
Yeah. I just give you a little bit of context about our city. Uh, 22 years ago, we started pastors meeting or pastors fellowship in the city. It was one Canadian guy and myself from YWAM that we actually started that. And uh, for 22 years, we have a good fellowship of all of the evangelicals in the city. We have 32 churches. And I mean, it's go all the way from uh, Calvinistic Baptist to all the way to the crazy charismatic. <laughs> and we are friends. <laughs> so every month we have a pastor's prayer breakfast where we just come, share the meal, pray for each other, share the word. So Terrific. 10 days before the war started, we had a <clears throat> monthly prayer meeting. And I said, guys, uh, should we get ready for something? And uh, some of the pastors, but they was quite reluctant. And they said, well, you know, we'll deal with the problems as they arrive. And so 10 days later, when the war started, the war started at 5, 8 in the morning at our Vivian base, all of the pastors came for the meeting. Oh, boy. Yeah. And uh, we said we have to do something. And we started, uh, uh, it's a joint effort for the relief. And uh, we created a core team, uh, four of us under that core team. And we represent all of the 32 evangelical churches. And I run to the wholesale store and I bought it everything that I can possibly buy right that moment. Some others went and trying to find the mattresses and we run out of mattresses, we find the forms and we took away the chairs and benches from the churches and made everything possible to receive the refugees. And when the wave of refugees came, Lynn, I have to tell you, it was, it was heartbreaking, you know. Yeah. We had a family that came to us and they had a two days old baby mm. and uh, they traveled from Kiev like 16 or 19 hours just to get to Ternopil. Uh, on the 6th, 7th and the 8th of March, all together, we was hosting up to 3,500 people every oh, given wow. night. Oh, wow. And in our base, uh, Every inch of the space on the floor was taken by the mattresses. We had 115 people for night, and we had 15 dogs, 12 cats. And I tell you, that, that was really heartbreaking. And if you'll go to the train station, and the evacuation train will arrive, and 1,500 people will get out that was in the train for 26, 28 hours. And they are coming from Kharkiv that completely bombed. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, they are completely devastated, disoriented, and 99% it's the women and kids, the most vulnerable. It's a yeah. heartbreak. Yeah. And yeah. so from day number two, we understood uh, that beside uh, the hosting refugees, we start to do evacuation. So we got the really brave guys. They sacrificed their own vans and we start going to Kiev and evacuating people. Same time, we create a 800 number call center for helping people to take them to the border to Poland. And I remember we took a one bus, the first bus, and I went with them to the border. And uh, that night it was, was like minus 10 outside. Mm. And it was 20,000 refugees on the border walking through and take seven hours to get from one side to another. And we minus 10. Minus 10. Oh my goodness. And so <laughs> that was that oh. was really hard. That was really hard. And must have been a lot of little kids and babies, even, huh? Yeah. Yes. How do they survive in minus 10? Oh, it must have been so hard for the mothers yeah. to even keep them warm enough to stay alive. Yeah, it was hard. So from that moment until right now, I have a famous saying right now that we are building the plane as we are flying yeah. and we're trying to fuel the plane at the same time. Yeah. So it requires such a high level of flexibility that if you think about creating some system and structure, forget it. It just, you have to adjust yourself and you have to ask God for the grace for every moment and just keep going. Yeah. And yeah. my mission is in the shortest time as possible, to help as many people as possible to get in a safe place. Yeah. And how we can do that, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. So yeah. And this is what we're doing. And, that's and I have to, yeah, that's I have to say that YVM family, it's amazed me. You know, it's a true mafia. 
I tell you, <laughs> you know, we, they was like, a, <laughs> they start coming out from every hole it's possible. I think on the third day of the invasion, we had the first van from Romania bringing the goods. Uh, after that, we start getting vans from Germany, from Poland, from Hungary, from Norway. I mean, you, you name it. And yeah. people start buying uh, vans. Uh, I mean, right now you cannot buy a van in Poland. I mean, Ukrainians bought it, everything that is possible. Yeah, we have yeah. a foreigner drivers that can go through the border because Ukrainians cannot cross the border, the guys. Right. And right. we don't know who is these people. Yeah. They have no yeah. idea. And they yeah. come and say, can you do this? Yes, okay, you can do it and just go. Yeah. And the God's work, you know, Lynn, it's, it's amazing. It's a testimony to the world, how God unite everyone. Yeah. I can be emotional, sorry. <laughs> what a wonderful, wonderful story mm -hmm. and what a tragic story. All, it, it, it demonstrates the worst of the best of, of mankind, doesn't it? Because yes. what, what's happening uh, with, with well, what we realize has happened with the cities that are now uh, being deserted by the Russian army and uh, the, all the bodies left behind and the horrific stories. I, I won't mention uh, the, the stories that we've got just in the last couple of days of what what the, the YWAM people and the other Christians are finding as they go into these places and the, the atrocities that were so evident. And yeah. the, it's not even bestial, it's, 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 it's worse than animals. You know? Yeah, I know, I know. There's no words to describe. But, but then I don't, I don't think demons inhabit animals very often, but mm -hmm. th this is the work of something very demonic, isn't it? It's like the humanity is. is displaced and replaced by something that is pure hell. Mm -hmm. exactly. and, and all human uh, sensitivities and values are gone. Yeah. And against that, um, we're, we're seeing the most extraordinary bravery. I think of the <laughs> young guys, uh, because I think, I, maybe it's your, your base too, but uh, I think at least Kiev was saying, you know, we don't want, we don't want fathers to, to drive. We don't want married guys to drive. We, we want single guys to drive. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and they're risking their lives and they're and they're working nonstop every day, every day, every day. Yeah. Uh, and, and and by the way, you know, we 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 are prepared when the time for people to come out and get some post trauma counseling and debriefing mm -hmm. and all. We you know we've got hospitality space, um, and I know other Y one bases in, in the Western European part of the world will also offer hospitality. I'm I'm liaising for uh, post trauma crisis counseling and so on so because you know young kids and we've seen we've seen the recordings of some of the young women young guys yeah. saying you know yes we know that we may die but uh god's told us to stay so i'd rather die in a place of obedience than to disobey you know to save yeah. my life yeah that's extraordinary I, I yeah i am amazed by the you know the kiev guys the, the the young boys that tirelessly you know going back and forth and it was some days that I will see them again in Ternopil. I said, what are you doing? Get out, you know, get lost. Don't come here. You know, it's danger for you to drive all of these bridges in Kiev. And they said, we're going to be fine. We're just trusting God. And, yeah. you know, the, the guys in Lutsk and Kiev and Vinica in Ternopil, you know, tirelessly. I mean, they, 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 you don't have to ask for the extra mile. It's right there. And yeah. beside the RYVM staff, we, we got some amazing people that came in evacuation trains, amazing Christians that they just came. So how can we help you? Like in, I work a lot in evacuation and all of the guys that work with me, not even one of them are RYVMers, huh. but they are RYVMers. So I, I was already thinking about, you know, can we talk to the UFN and maybe to uh, decide that they complete the DTS and because of the crash course <laughs> yeah, they went yeah. through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and a higher school and relief development. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah. this is amazing. Seriously. Yeah. It's a, it's a testimony of the God goodness that I, and the way how he provide, you know, we have a saying right now that it's easier to find money than time. People are so generous. And any given moment, any given time, you need this, no problem. Here we yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I said, we have a shortage of food. And I called to my friend Florin in, in uh, Romania, I said, can you help? He said, yes. 
And I called to my, our friends in the Norway that was doing fundraising. I said, can you help? And in three days, 20 tons of food was <laughs> internotted yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and so many people want to help. You know, we we first got involved, and we were thinking, "What do we do? What do we do?" And mm -hmm. and and uh, we, we found that uh, somehow a, a couple who operate a small business jet charter company um, heard about it, and they were filling a, a jet full of of goods that mm -hmm. were needed, and said, "Where can we fly to?" You know what? <laughs> and we've, yeah. we we helped them find a place in Romania next to one of our bases, and and then they mm -hmm. can distribute the goods. At yeah. the moment, what 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 would you think uh, is the greatest need? Not not necessarily where you are, but but generally <laughs> across the area. Is it vans and drivers to evacuate people? Is it food? Is it uh, nappies? Or you know, what what, yeah. what what would you say is a, is a list of, of needs? The the answer, the simple answer, will be yes. So whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. well, let me just say for, for those for those watching, uh, you know, we have we here in Harpen and Wyoming Harpen took on a coordinating role uh, yeah. that we we're asked to do because the people doing it previously were overwhelmed. So what we're trying to do is filter uh, the volunteers so that they come in the best possible way for the best possible time, because mm -hmm. we don't want a lot of individuals showing up uh, haphazardly. But we want people coming in teams for a set amount of time. I think they've been saying two weeks um, and go to the places where, where people are needing to be relieved now because mm -hmm. we've got to get some rest. Uh, and so people can go in uh, as volunteers for two weeks and help relieve situations. Mm -hmm. if, if you want to do, if you want to look at that, I think it's uh, refugeeresponse.org uh, or something we, we've got. Uh, but if, if you go online to... Um, even the, the is it what's the what's the uh address for funding that, that comes out daily from al akimov's it's why i'm slavic ministries why I'm slavic and ministries. it's believe yeah for ukraine yeah. and why i'm montana is doing the same okay uh, they processing all of this so it's a okay. two places to dominate and uh, we have our uh, account here in ukraine too uh that people yeah. can wire directly to the account okay and yeah. what's that I can send the information. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's not the online. It has to be IBAN. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll I'll put that up uh, under this uh, recording when it goes up. I'm going mm -hmm. to. What we're doing this on the uh, what is it the the seventh of March? I'll put it up on the eighth in my normal mm -hmm. live stream place, uh, and then uh, for people who, who are operating in other currencies, especially in, in British pounds. Uh, we also are receiving donations. And I, I want to say, you know, a, a lot of places will take a small processing fee. Uh, so the big organizations, the big United Nations organizations and, and, and the mm -hmm. really well-known names, they'll spend the majority of any gift uh, on their ongoing expenses. Um, mm -hmm. And so a very large percentage goes to support the offices and the personnel and the salaries and all the rest. I just want to say for us here in the UK, we're taking absolutely nothing off the gifts. We're Thank you. processing them free of charge. Uh, mm -hmm. We're not taking our office costs. We're not taking our banking costs. We're not taking anything out of it because that's part of our, our generosity towards what's happening there. Uh, and Thank I think that there are other places like that. Uh, and, and at the most that I've ever seen a Wyoming base that may be processing. Uh, so, so you get a tax receipt will take mm -hmm. 5%. So it's a tiny fraction of what normally happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and even those organizations often that, that advertise uh, on TV and all and say you know 100% goes, well no they put the administrative costs into the project costs, so mm -hmm. anybody watching you know if you really want to see 100% go, um, then you get, go through a YOM place because we don't take any salaries and, and yes. we don't we don't run our offices out of this kind of money. Yes. All right. Yeah. So so at, at the moment, what are your priorities? I mean, you're obviously just everything is turned upside down uh when you get up in the morning what do you well better said when you go to bed at night and you look back on the day how have you spent your day <laughs> you know the thing is uh when i go to bed i feel that uh, i have a, a really severe jet lag every night yeah. 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 <laughs> this is how it's felt <laughs> yeah yeah and uh every night i go to the to the bed and i think God, help me to wake up from this horrible yeah. dream. 
Yeah. And, you know, because sometimes you feel like you're in a computer game or you, you had too much pizza last night. And <laughs> seriously, it just, <laughs> but you wake up in the morning and you just get yourself together and you just go. Just and I out. said, my job will be over when I'll stop receive calls. So my screen yeah. time in, in the average, it's uh, from six to seven, seven hours a day, just on the phone. Yeah. And, uh, and you have many balls in the air that you have to handle. Some of them, you know, I have no idea how people finding my phone number. Like this morning, one guy called me from Donetsk region and he said, we have hospice of 23 people. Can you help us to evacuate? And it's like, where? <laughs> how? But at the same time, okay, there is a ministry in Baptist Church in Lutz about two hours away from us, and they're doing this kind of ministry, and I called them, and I connect those two, and I got out myself from this business, and I think they made a deal. And so this is the way how, how you do. Yeah. And yeah. it's a, you, you, yeah, it's, it's a different uh, uh, leadership that you, you are facing. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and the, 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 the word that we say there's enough grace for every day or his grace is sufficient for us, yeah. you taking that in a very practical way. Yeah. It's not the theoretical anymore. Your faith, your trust, uh, everything, it's a, it's a very practical level. And, you know, people ask me, do you sense God or how he's speaking to you and the, how you're making decisions? you just connect it and you just walk together and you have this close fellowship that you don't have to really have a two hours prayer meeting about what God is speaking in this situation because you cannot afford that. Uh, you just have to go. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it seems like everyone in that mode. Yeah. And this is the beauty of the whole thing. Uh, there is a people that cannot handle the situation. They are out of picture and which is okay. And but everybody who's in, they do understand what it's required and how much commitment that it's required, and you just go. Yeah. You are yeah. too tired. Okay, take some rest, yeah. maybe a few hours. And if you're not, let's keep going. And so this is the, the way how every day is look like. And if I hear what you're saying, uh, I think well, part of what you're saying is that is that uh, over the years God has blessed you with lots of friendships in key places. Yes. And when somebody contacts you, you think, yeah. ah, I know somebody who lives not far from there who has this thing. So you are using the gift of connecting people, right? Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, it's an anointing of YVAM, connect those who naturally are not connecting. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. And we always have to remember. And the thing is, you know, I was talking with, uh, we had a meeting today in our headquarters uh, for this operation. And uh, the, some of the people reflecting that the uh, quite influential uh, church leaders and political leaders, uh, they are Christian. And they said from all of the regions in Ukraine, Ternopil region, where we're from, the only one or all of the evangelicals actually working together okay. as a joint effort. But the thing is, you need to have this foundation uh, to build on and we have 22 years of relationship and friendship and we can afford that fantastic but the thing is you, you have to understand that the key role on that it was anointing of YVAM that we was able to connect all the way from uh, Calvinistic Baptists all the way to crazy charismatics and we are friends even though yeah. we have different theology so I think the message to YVAM never underestimate that God's anointing to connect those that naturally not connecting. Yes. Yes. Uh, that's a really good word. I hope YWAM is everywhere hear that because that resonates with me. I know that that's one of the things that I sort of woke up to sort of 10 years into building YWAM here was that God had given me friendships that were not a result of my abilities or my background or my class or anything about it. It was just a gift from God and then you start connecting people up. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's an anointing for everybody to move in. Well, yes. uh, Sasha, this has been terrific. I uh, thank you in the busy, busy days that you've given me this time. Uh, I trust that this will uh, reap a lot of good fruit, mostly help for you and the others. 
and let's stay in touch. Um, I think yes. I have one one last question. Okay. Um, when do you expect this to be over? One day. One day. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We don't. We don't. yeah. I, when people ask me that question, I, I always joke about it. I said, uh, let me call to Mr. Putin and <laughs> ask him that question. I'll get back with you soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there is a, several in, ingredients to it. Uh, the first of all is the help that we start receiving uh, from the West. And, you know, Looking in retrospective, uh, we can, you know, challenge them saying that we was talking to you about that this is gonna happen for many years yeah. and you didn't listen to us. Yeah. And now when it's happened, and you know, even when the whole thing started, uh, there are some high politicians in one of the European most influential nation was talking to, uh, talking to our ambassador, saying, you know what, why have we have to help you in forty eight hours? The whole thing will be over. Yeah. It's not yeah. going to be independent state of Ukraine. <laughs> but we proved them wrong. Yeah. So yeah. right now it's like a awakening moment for the whole world. Yeah. The whole world was challenged and okay, now we're doing this together. So now everyone are becoming Ukrainian yeah. and we're doing this together. So yes. as much effort we'll make it, as sooner that will happen. If you ask me when I want the war be over and I would say no. No, absolutely. My yeah. my breath prayer is God stops us now. That's my breath prayer. Yeah. And so, but at the same time, one of the scriptures that God gave it to me, it was from James chapter one, when James stuck into the all of the twelve tribes of Israel when they was in the uh, probably the, the the most horrible persecution. Yeah. And he yeah. said, when you facing nothing but difficulties, uh, find the joy in it. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is God is doing something very, very special with us as Ukrainians. Actually, it's the whole world, too. So I'm looking with anticipation what is going to be on another side. What is God will do after the whole thing? Yes. Will happen. But in the meantime, you know, we're going through like purifying fire that everything is coming to the top and taking away to the point we'll have a, a pure and precious gold. Amen. Amen. And as you look yep. in the, in our city, all of the billboards that we have right now, it's just the prayers. Is that right? It's the prayers. I will take you, I'll send you a few pictures. Please. So you just drive through the city and you just pray those prayers that in the billboards. So as a nation will humble itself under the lordship of Jesus Christ and understanding that this is the battle between David and Goliath, you know, and only the Lord Almighty can yeah. help you to go yeah. through this. Yeah. Can you imagine what God can do with us through this nation? So I pray, like next Tuesday, we're going to have a prayer breakfast again with the pastors. And we say, guys, you know, we don't know when the war is over. And we have to take an example from Nehemiah, fighting and building. Yeah. yeah. We have to provide the spiritual leadership and see what God saying to us as a body of Christ, as a bride of Christ. Because I think we, after this war, we'll have to redefine the church. We have to redefine missions. We have to redefine many, many different things. And Lord, please help us to see what you are doing so we would never go back to the business as usual. Yeah, amen. Hey Amen. Well, that passage from James has been a favorite of mine for a long time. Consider mm. all joy, yeah. uh, friends, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Yes. And when you have endurance, then mm -hmm. you have your perfect results and you're lacking in nothing. nothing. So, so we pray and we believe that the Ukrainian church will come out of this uh, a giant among the nations, mm -hmm. a, a power for, for missions. Amen. Yes. Amen. Well, Sasha, this has been terrific. Uh, we'll connect again when you have time and uh, see how things are going. But in the meantime, I just want to say to everybody who's who's watched this live, and, and even over the next month or two months or three months, uh, we don't know how long this is going to go, pray for Sasha and those pastors 
and all the Ukrainian Christians and pray for that refining uh, mm -hmm. that, that obviously is happening. Those who endure this are going to be spiritual giants. They're going to have faith for anything and everything. And so pray that they will make the impact that God has for them to make on our whole world. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good, Sasha. Great to talk to you. Yes, Thanks same for me. Very much. Yeah, and once more, you know, thank you, wife and family. Your support, your love, your care, it's overwhelmed us, and we are so grateful. You, one of us, you are Ukrainians too. Thank you. That's great. Thank you.